I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that one. I certainly did. Uh, it was a uh, that was a classic game. Uh, I haven't been part of too many like that where you get down by 20 and play very poorly, and then you play great, and, and then they they're a very good team. And just the way it ended, we were down at the end. We pressed, got a couple steals, and made some shots, and then we made some big ones in overtime. So uh, what what a great college basketball game. Very appreciative of our fans. Uh, I thought that the, the the stadium or the arena, Galen Center's energy, and, and the fans uh, really helped our team especially in the second half late in the game. And, and what, a, what a great uh, credit to our players to hang in there and, and come back from being way down. Uh, they, they played, they knew they played poorly, uh, but uh, they just battled and, and uh, made some huge plays. Coach, can you take us back? You're down 20, 20 and a half. Um, take us back to what happened in halftime. To, to well, my father was a ninth grade coach and varsity coach in the state of Pennsylvania for many years. And he had a very deep voice. and. I tried to use my dad's uh, deep voice at halftime, and, and I almost passed out. Uh, I yelled very loudly, and our players responded, uh, but uh, they, they deserved the credit. They came out in the second half in overtime and beat a very good basketball team. Andy, what, what did you say was the, was the biggest difference in the second half? Well, our energy defensively, and, and then we started making some shots. The first half, we, we missed so many layups around the rim. We were soft uh, finishes. We missed. We only took three threes in the first half. And, and then they shot the lights out. They shot like 67% and they were making everything. Some, some was bad defense, but a lot of it was, they just made a lot of shots. Uh, and, and so give them credit, they're a great basketball team. And, and they got shooters and, and they have quick releases and, and they're very good. So uh, uh, some of the first half was them, but a lot of it was us. The Moisa Weaver had maybe five or six clutch moments there. What did you think? Well, the last three games, he's played terrific basketball, and we need him to step up and play like a, a sophomore with aggressiveness. And he was too passive. That's why we took him out of the starting lineup. Uh, he's playing great basketball right now, uh, and, and we need him because he's so talented. And, and uh, it doesn't matter who starts on our team, by the way, because they all play starters minutes anyway. And, and some nights with our depth, certain guys step up. Some guys have off games, and the next guy, they, next time they step up, and, that's been the story of our season. So uh, very proud of Elijah. Uh, he's a developing player, but uh, wow, was he good in the, uh, late in the game tonight. Very, very proud of him. Why did you go to uh, four guards late in the game and then overtime? Uh, well, Nyeka fouled out. And then we, uh, uh, Isaiah Mobley actually played very, very, very well, especially in the second half. So I felt kind of bad uh, taking him out with uh, three and a half, four minutes left because he, he helped us get back in the game. And, but generally down the stretch, I, I ride with our senior, Nick Rakosovic. And, uh, and then in overtime, the, the way, the way Stanford, we were switching everything defensively anyway, one through four, and sometimes one through five. Uh, so to have Utomi at the power forward with four guards in there doesn't hurt us defensively because we switch everything. It's just a little harder to rebound the ball. You like Jonah brought a lot of energy, especially down the stretch. Who? Jonah. Yeah, well, jo Jonah played. Jonah had a tough game uh, until late, and uh, you know, you know he, he made that big three. We called timeout. We were in that play out of timeout. He made the two. I thought it was a three, but he stepped on the line, and, and, he, and he, uh, he stole the ball at the end. And, and instead of jacking up some bad shot, he found his teammate Elijah uh, for a wide open three, and Elijah got fouled. So, so Jonah just made some huge plays down the stretch, and, and he, he had a you know he was six eighteen from the field, still nineteen points, but it was his competitive spirit it just helped us. Help Will his teammates to, to stay in the game and, and, and try to win it. You, you shortened the bench a little bit tonight and went with Ethan mostly at point guard. Uh, were you holding Kyle out for is it the reluctance to shoot the ball? No, Kyle, Kyle's fine. He's going to be fine. Uh, tonight, Ethan was playing so well in, in, the, in the way the game was going. Uh, it just sometimes I do that where guys uh, that, that normally play certain minutes. Uh, don't get in as much. Uh, so it has nothing to do with Kyle not playing well. It just had the, the flow of the game. Ethan was playing great, and and uh, uh, I, I just went with uh, a shorter lineup tonight. Coach, um, considering the magnitude of the game, was this your biggest factual win? This season, yes. Now, we've had some big ones over the years. Uh, but in this season, to go 15-3, and three, to be 4-1 in the Pac-12, to beat a very good team like Stanford, Certainly, it was our biggest win of the year. The way it, way it uh, unfolded and how we came back. Uh, the the Pac-12 is very difficult to win on the road. Uh, we have a couple road wins already, so we feel great. But now we go on the road to Oregon. Uh, they're top ten in the country. We play them Thursday, and Oregon State's a really hard place to play. And, and that's why I said, like our crowd today, when we go on the road, 
We see crowds like this everywhere we go, uh, and, and some are bigger. Like UCLA was sold out 13,600 on last Saturday night. What a great atmosphere that was to play a rivalry game. And tonight we, we had this, we would not have won this without our fan support because they gave our players energy. And that's what a home court advantage is supposed to be. And that's why you look around the country and it's tough to win the road. In fact, I think Pullman, in Pullman Washington, uh, they retired Clay Thompson's jersey. I think they had 10,000 fans there today, and they, they beat Oregon State, and they're three and one on, on, at home, and we're the only team to beat them on their, uh, on their home floor. So uh, there's no there's no sure wins in this league. You have to, especially on the road, you have to go prepare, uh, and even home games, the, the, the way the league is balanced, there's a lot of good players in this league right now, a lot. And, and I think hopefully the, the nation is gonna uh, to realize that throughout the course of the season, the Pac-12 is deep, and, and uh, a lot of good basketball teams. Coach, have you thought that Games like this are needed to, to try to learn how to get better. I'm sorry? Do you find games like this like this are needed for them to be? Well, it, this, this gives us great confidence. We, we were confident going in today because we, we had won eight out of nine. This is nine out of ten now. But the win like this gives you a little something, another jolt. There's something special. This doesn't happen often, the, the, way, uh, the way the game unfolded. This is a huge comeback, uh, a very uh, gritty win for us, and hang in there. So I, I think the message to our players is you just don't give up. You just got to keep, keep playing for 40 minutes. And if it takes you five more, you, you go for 45. And, and that's what they did. Coach, you raised the defensive intensity a, a lot in that second half. How much did that help you, the energy on, on the offensive end? Well, we started making some shots. We were kind of doing both. Uh, we jumped out. I think we went, it was 10 to 1 run to open the second half. And, and then they, uh, we had a chance. Uh, we cut to eight. And then Jonah missed a wide open three with, I don't know, 10 or 12 minutes left in the uh, in the right corner and missed. And they went down and got to 10. And then we missed a layup. Uh, then they got to 12. And then, we, so then, then, and then they stretched out again to 15. And then we came roaring back uh, and cut it down again. And at the end, we cut it to two. And we had a couple of chances to take the lead under four minutes. And, and we missed, once again, missed a couple of open shots and and, uh, and let them put, push the lead back to seven in the last two and a half minutes. And, and then luckily we, uh, we figured out how to tie the game in the last 15 seconds. Do you consider playing Max at all in the first half when you needed somebody to make a shot? Uh, well, Max Max had a really good game last game. Uh, as I said tonight, we shortened the rotation down. Now, Max is going to have his time. He's going to be a terrific <laughs> basketball player. Uh, but right now, with, with Danny Utomi playing well at his position, uh, we're going to ride with the seniors as, as far as the starting lineup. Uh, Daniel's 23 years old. He's, he, he's uh, been average 14 and 6 last year uh, at Akron. He's been through the uh, three years of college basketball. and, and uh, uh, he's just uh, a really good player right now. So it's no, no uh, discredit to Max because we all love Max. He is going to be a terrific player down the road. And he's helped us some games this year. So, so it's not like we, we're forgetting about him. He's going to play uh, throughout the season. But, but um, uh, for some reason tonight, I just felt more comfortable with our veterans. Let's go one more.